The yaw damper then processes the information and signals it to the respective actuators to bring the plane back on course, hence dampening the yaw moment. Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and lovely greetings from my hotel room here in Zhengzhou, China. I received a huge amount of comments and questions regarding today's topic, so I really think yaw are going to enjoy this video. We're going to look at what a yaw damper is and how it works, what it has to do with the ESP of your car. So take your feet off the pedals and let's get started. Let's begin by explaining the three reference axes. Now the longitudinal axis runs from fore to aft of the plane, allowing movement around this axis results in a roll. Think of placing the aircraft on a skewer and spinning it around. Now the lateral axis runs through the width of the aircraft, which allows it to pitch up and down, similar to sort of nodding your head to say yes. Finally, the normal axis runs from the floor to the ceiling, allowing aircraft to yaw. You can visualize this like putting it on a turntable and sort of spinning it around. Now, all these axes meet in one point, which shifts throughout the flight and known as the plane's center of gravity. Now, cargo pilots and loading teams work closely together to calculate the weight of the load they'll be carrying and where to load it within the plane's cargo hold to ensure that the center of gravity remains balanced. This doesn't just apply to cargo planes, it basically applies to any plane that you fly. Nevertheless, flight along the normal axis or your axis is called directional stability. When you hear directional stability, think of our turntable we place our plane on and now draw 360 lines spreading outwards from the plane, meaning when you are turning on the table, you are turning in direction. So the turntable is basically your directional heading indicator. So controlled yaw along this axis allows the pilot to maintain a heading during crosswind conditions, for example. Now to control the yaw, a pilot will use the pedals to move the rudder on the vertical stabilizer. For example, you are on a short final, your aircraft is yawing to the left due to the crosswind coming from the left. But in order for you to point your nose onto the center line, you apply a right rudder counteracting the left yaw. Just look at this beautiful landing of this Boeing 747 during strong crosswinds. And in particular, look at the rudder. Where could you have experienced something like that? Yes, when riding your bicycle in a strong crosswind, your handlebars are the rudder. Now the wind is coming from one side, trying sort of to push you off course and you steer into it to maintain on course. Meaning if your is not controlled properly, the aircraft will struggle to maintain its direction. With its side or fuselage surface exposed to airflow for an extended period, the plane will begin to skid, allowing uneven lift, which can cause it to roll unless corrected. This can be very dangerous, especially during takeoff and landing when stability is crucial. Now imagine you're on a road trip with your friends and you're driving a van filled with the luggage. If you don't load the bags evenly, the van might veer off to one side when you hit the brakes. Similarly, an aircraft needs to be loaded correctly to maintain its center of gravity and stability. If it isn't, the pilot will have a much harder time controlling it, particularly in adverse conditions. Now, best example, when you have a passenger like this climbing out of onto the wing, now you have to correct for yaw for the added drag and for roll for the unbalanced weight distribution. So you should just get rid of that passenger. <laughs> But on to the main question. What exactly is a yaw damper? In the simplest terms, a yaw damper is a system that inhibits unwanted movement of an aircraft around its normal yaw or vertical axis. It enhances directional stability by eliminating short-term yaw oscillations automatically. 
It works either side by side with the autopilot or can be used independently, helping to create smooth turns without the pilot needing to use the rudder pedals. Now, the yaw damper system consists of several components, including rate sensors, gyroscopes, and actuators. Now, rate sensors and accelerometers positioned within the vertical stabilizer are constantly sending information about how the aircraft is moving relative to where or how it should be flying to the yaw damper. The yaw damper translates this information into corrective rudder inputs between three to six degrees. So let's say we were intended to fly along a straight line, but due to internal or outside forces, we veer off or yaw off course. This is when the so-called yaw rate gyroscope, which detects abnormalities in the yaw direction, comes to action. Now, this instrument is like a super sensitive compass, which quickly identifies if the plane is veering off course. And if it does, it sends a corrective signal to the yaw damper. The yaw damper then processes the information and signals it to the respective actuators of the rudder to deflect in the correct direction to bring the plane back on course, hence dampening the yaw moment. Now this process sounds as if the yaw rate gyroscope is sending corrective measures every three to five minutes. Au contraire. Yaw dampers on jet airliners correct for yaw every second, as you can see here. This is actually a video from the 747-8 that I fly for work, which comes with two yaw dampers as our vertical stabilizer is split into a lower rudder and a upper rudder. Now you might be thinking, do the rudder pedals constantly move left to right during flight? No, they don't, because the yaw dampers are installed after the field trim unit, which is responsible for moving the pedals, and then the yaw damper feeds the information directly to the rudder actuators. The only time you can actually see them work is on this display. So if one of them fails, the inoperative light comes on and the other yaw damper has double the workload. Now consider this real world example. If a plane experiences an engine failure, the yaw damper can assist the pilot by calculating how much opposite rudder is required to maintain a stable direction and apply it automatically. This feature helps reduce the workload for the pilot flying during takeoff and landing with one engine inoperative. For instance, the yaw damper on the Boeing 777 assists the pilots if one of those massive engines fail, especially during high outputs like on takeoff. Now imagine a scenario where you're driving your car and suddenly lose control due to a flat tire. A well-functioning ESP, the Electronic Stability Program, would help you maintain a straight line instead of veering off to the side of the flat tire. So you could loosely say that the yaw damper in a plane is comparable to the Electronic Stability Program in your car. Does that make sense? What about Dutch roll? Now, with all that being said, the main function of the yaw damper is to monitor and counteract the effects of Dutch roll. Dutch roll is essentially the term for an out of phase turn. When a pilot rolls a plane, it creates an opposite yaw effect. Similarly, when a plane yaws, it creates an opposite roll effect. Now, this combination of effects leads to the Dutch roll which looks like the aircraft is rolling and yawing from left to right as it tries to correct itself in flight. The simplest way of sort of explaining Dutch roll is if the roll stability is higher than the yaw stability in the airplane, once your plane is being disturbed by turbulence, for instance, there will be a bit of roll momentum and yaw momentum. Now the wings will roll themselves back to level before the tail had a chance to turn to its neutral position, which in return will induce a series of oscillating rudder movements. The yaw damper is there to prevent that from happening. If not, these oscillations can get bigger and bigger and make the plane somewhat uncontrollable for a moment. The Boeing 707 and 727 were classic examples which were hard to control if the yaw damper had failed or was turned off in the simulator. 
Why, you may ask? Because the 707 and the 727 were one of the first commercial jet airliners with swept back wings, which induce the Dutch roll effect, especially the 727, which is lacking in vertical stability due to the small surface area of the vertical stabilizer. Now, here's a great question. How can you tell by just looking at a plane if it has a reduced vertical stability? Yes. Ventral fins. Ventral fins, which were later installed by the engineers, for example, in the Cessna Citation or the Beechcraft 1900, increased the vertical stability of the plane, but came with the downside of more drag and weight. So let's talk about some practical implications. For commercial pilots, the yaw damper can significantly enhance the flying experience for both the pilots and passengers. When flying through turbulent air, the yaw damper smooths out the ride, reducing the feeling of bumps and yolts. Now, passengers often appreciate, obviously, a smoother flight as it makes the journey more comfortable. Additionally, the yaw damper contributes to fuel efficiency. By maintaining steady flight paths, the aircraft requires less thrust to overcome drag, which can translate to fuel savings over long distances. Now, let's wrap up our discussion on the yaw damper. This sophisticated system is a prime example of how technology enhances safety and efficiency in aviation by automatically correcting unwanted yaw and minimizing Dutch roll effects. The yaw damper allows pilots to focus on broader operational tasks such as navigation and communication. That's it for today. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions or need further clarification about your dampers or any other aviation related topic, feel free to comment below. And on that bombshell, here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check, activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check, perform a touch and go at my website, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe.